Hey guys, Ash here with Jensen's back with another episode of the Dry Downs Fragrance Podcast. Joined, as always, by Manny at Cascade Scents, Timmy at Imagine Scent. What's going on? What's going on? Ayo. Uh, here we go. What a day. Should be a little <laughs> yeah. day. So, good weather. <laughs> good weather. Good topic. So, there is a very green day. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, oh. Today, oh. we're going to be talking about Parfums de Marley's newest release, which is now known as Greenly. And um, for now, <laughs> and talk about maybe, you know, what could have possibly gone on there? What's, what's going on with this, this situation? Dude, when I first heard about Greenly as a name, I thought it was a meme for a second because they already changed it once to, you know, Epsom. Epsom. And I thought that Greenlee was kind of like a, um, a, uh, a meme. And then I found out just yesterday from Maddie that it's yeah, real. Yeah, it's legit. Like, what? What? So I guess we should Jeez. say that we don't have any insider information, really. It's not like I have contacts no. deep within Parfums de Marley or anything who are feeding me information. That's not the case. This is just... Um, Based off of you know what we've heard through the grapevine, what we've seen online, and what we know from the past. So, in case you're unaware, Parfums de Marly came out with a new fragrance, and it was called Sutton. And that's kind of where this all mm. this all kicked off. So, <laughs> from what I was told, Parfums de Marly had that name picked out for a long time as they were working on the fragrance. That's, that's what they were wanting to roll with, with that name, with Sutton. And I think that they have it trademarked in Europe, the name Sutton for Parfums de Marly. Uh, that's, that's what I've been told. And then suddenly, after their, their release was made public online for anybody to see, and reviews started to come out on the fragrance on YouTube, and uh, the fragrance was available for purchase... Suddenly, after what, like two days? Was it? It's like two days. About yeah. two and a half two days. Yeah, yeah. about about two, yeah, two days. Yeah, it was gone. And it was like, oh, where'd Sutton go? And then suddenly it popped back up onto their website. But now it had a new name, same bottle, same box design, but a new name, which was Epsom. And then that lasted for like a day, <laughs> and then it was gone, and now back again as Greenly. <laughs> so um, that's the backstory of the fragrance we're going to be talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, a little, a little bit, a little bit of side tangent. Mm-hmm. Who here in the comments own all three versions? <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, I wonder if somebody <laughs> does. I don't even know if Epsom ever actually got made, though. I don't, I don't think that they ever had any like boxes really? or anything made oh, for that. Really? If I had to guess, because it was only online Dang. for like a day, and with Sutton, mm-hmm. I knew they had been gearing up, or I know rather that they had been gearing up for that for a while. So. They, oh. they probably had a bunch of that ready a to go. A number of creators have that bottle already, right? Yeah, so, I know um, Yeah, I know so. at least two. And then um, I think some other people ordered it, like right when it was available for sale. And they got bottles in that said Sutton uh, because they'd been shipped out before all this happened. I don't have a bottle. I haven't ordered a bottle. So um, I don't have one. But I, I do have a little right. decant, so I have smelled it. But no bottle. You missed out on the vintage. I, I did. I missed out. Vintage. I, I missed out. Yeah. yeah. Very sad. Very sad. I cry. <laughs> I weep. Yeah. There's people out here claiming collectors. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Point. I'm like, yeah. It, it really kind of is now. Yeah. Because you know it's never going to be made again, and it's and there's only like maybe like uh, how many limited amount of bottles that got sold and shipped out. So, very. Well, that's true. It's not right even right. on the bottle itself. It's just on right. the box. Yeah. It's just it? on the box. So yeah. the box yeah. is the limited edition. Yeah, the limited yeah, edition. Yeah, and you box. need to have it sealed, right? <laughs> because otherwise, you, you could tamper with it. You could take out the Sutton and put in yep. mm-hmm. the Greenly bottle, and it would be like, oh, that's. Yeah, that's it. See, you need the actual Sutton. Yeah, it has to be. <laughs> it has to be still wrapped. Isn't there like a sticker at the bottom of a Fum Somali? I don't. Is there one? The, I can't remember. Yeah, right. I'd have to go grab one yeah. though to like, see if it has the name on it. Does that one say Sutton? I don't know. I don't have a bottle. Huh. And this is just me plugging the rest of our shows. If you don't believe us as far as things getting tampered with with original presentations, uh, just watch the most recent cast of ours, not this one, where Timmy lamented his 1 million limited yeah, edition yeah. and it was filled with something else. Very sad. Uh, 
it was an experience. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just saying, you buy that stuff sealed if you see so it. So this is what's happened. Um, it's it's made its way around Facebook groups on fragrance forums. A lot of people are talking about it. And we do have a really, 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 really good idea of what happened, of what transpired there. Um, a, yeah, yeah, a really very good idea. But again, I don't have any contacts within uh, these companies, but I do know people who do have contacts within the companies. So I, I myself don't, though. So anyway, the word on the street is that Bond number nine got extremely upset with Parfums de Marly having a fragrance by the name of Sutton. And do you know why that is? <laughs> mm. ah. Hashtag Sutton, Sutton Place. That's Place. right, because <laughs> Bond number nine has a fragrance named Sutton Place. <laughs> and so Bond number nine is very litigious. They're, they're, they, they do like to go after other brands if they feel like there's a similarity in the name at all to where they have a chance that they could get the other brand into court and the other brand could lose. If they think there's even a chance, they're like, yep, sue them. <laughs> and they just go after them. Um, well, it's, it, Parfums de Marley is not the first brand that this has happened to. Um, other brands, small brands, indie brands, and larger niche brands have had Bond number nine go after them before. And uh, for the same reason. And so here we are. Mm -hmm. uh, Parfums de Marley, from what I was told, thought that they could probably beat it in court, but they didn't want to put up with the hassle of, of dragging this out, and then it would be all over the place, you know, Bond number 9 versus Parfums de Marley. Um, mm -hmm. And so they said, well, screw it. We'll just hey. change the name. That, that could have been a great marketing move, you know? I mean, people were talking about it, a lot of hype around the fragrance, and then if they actually win, the fragrance comes out and everyone buys it, you know? Could yeah, I, I wonder if maybe, and I, I don't know how this would work in, in, you know, in court or anything. I'm not a lawyer, obviously, but I wonder if, if they were worried about going forward with the sales and then, um, you know, the court stuff happens and then they're going to owe a lot of money to Bond number 9 potentially and they're going to have to axe the fragrance completely and it's going to be a big mess and just cost them all kinds of money. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that's what they yeah. were worried about. Mm -hmm. It's either that or they just wanted to get the release into as many as quickly as possible. Uh, homes as mm -hmm. possible because let's be real, it's a summer fragrance. We only legitimately have another two months of summer left. Mm -hmm. So why not rush the release as far as its name and getting these pre-orders back online and in case you guys are you know interested it's not like we're being paid by pdm ourselves but they have relisted the fragrance on their website yeah. already with the greenlee pre-orders right. available so uh there's that mm -hmm. that being said um we mentioned how epsom was up there earlier with some pre-order yeah. information I don't know if anyone got their actual epsom bottles or boxes if you guys yeah, have let that us would know be in the comments but I, but beforehand, of course, we had, you know, Sutton. And with Bond going after them for that, to me, it's quite hilarious just because of the fact that they're one to rip brands as far as the actual subject matter themselves in the actual juice. Uh, right now, that's kind of like whatever at this point because the name's been changed twice since. Uh, mm -hmm. A part of me, as far as interest, what happened to Epsom? I, like, I think it was like, just a bad name. It. It's a bad name. Okay, I, yeah. I think what happened, yeah. and I could be wrong, but I think what happened is they were probably kind of broadsided. You know, they were they were caught off guard, and then they were like, well, we still need to get this out there, and that was the name they came up with really quickly. And at, at some probably point... like a placeholder. Yeah, at some go. point, somebody probably came up to them and said, you know, Epsom, most people probably think of Epsom salt when they hear that name, so it's probably not a great thing to have in your mind mm -hmm. as far as like a summertime fragrance and people think of like epsom salts that they soak in a bathtub with or whatever and they were like oh yeah you're right that isn't a good name so they took it down and they're like we need a name <laughs> and then they're like the bottle is green and we're trying to give you this like fresh green, green. feeling that's greenly just go with it and then put it out there <laughs> so 
like I get what they were trying to do, Epsom, like in in the UK, but it's just. It, yeah, you're right. It sounds like they hit the panic button, and that was the first thing that came up in the generator was Epsom. And mm -hmm. yikes. So what's the lesson here? You know, if you're a fragrance brand, make sure to check with Bond Number no. Nine's name. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> and the the issue with this as well is that Bond Number no. Nine has a huge category, right? And and they, they want to come after you for nearly anything. It seems like um, I know that mm -hmm. other brands have gotten in trouble for using Highline in the name of their fragrance. And so they were, you know, they had the same thing happen to them that happened to Parfums de Marley. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, well, you can't use Highline, period, in your fragrances or else they're going to come after you and um, other fragrances as well. But at what point do they think it's okay? You know what I mean? Like, so they have, mm -hmm. like, Little Italy. So it's like, you can't use Little, you can't use Italy, you just can't use it together, probably. They'll come after you. Um, yeah, you know, they have Washington. What is it like Washington Square Park? If I name my fragrance Little Milan. This, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a little. Uh, it's a little iffy. <laughs> Yo, like hold on. That sounds dua. Yeah. Actually, that does, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, that does sound dua. <laughs> but it's um, it's one of those things. Like I think you couldn't name your fragrance Lafayette, for example. And they would come after you, which is also strange yeah. though, because then that's the name of uh, a place as well so i mean i do enjoy a number of bond fragrances of course like bleaker street but as you were alluding to bleaker street does have a strong similarity to ralph lauren purple label uh, which is a designer fragrance that came out before bleaker street and it's not as if bleaker street is the only bond number nine fragrance that does have a similarity to something that came out before it so mm-hmm uh, for them, I guess that's okay, mm. but then... New Harlem? Yeah. Uh, well, Legend. hang on about New Harlem, because the same guy did Rojas, man, so oh, yeah. I get it. Well, then you, you also have Hamptons, which has a similarity to uh, SMW, Silver Mountain Water. Uh, Bond number 9.com. similarity mm. to... The list goes on. Yeah. So, and really, if you if you go down through their entire catalog, they do have fragrances, of course, that are that are strictly Bond Number Nine. They're not; they don't smell like anything else. But they also have a good chunk of the catalog that you could look at as inspired by fragrances. So, to their credit, they've been way more original lately. But also to their dismay, not a whole lot of people have been looking out for them lately too. So this is what happens when you develop a reputation for being one of the premier, you know, inspired expressions brands, but all of a sudden you start to come out with your own stuff and people aren't feeling them as much. And uh, they'll have their cult following of people who've been loyal to Bond and the brand, who are actively buying, especially if they can still afford a, a brick and mortar space mm -hmm. in New York. However, at the same time, as far as the, the you know, the most ardent active buyers in the community no one's really checking for bond i think we can all agree on that new release wise it, it doesn't seem like people wise. get yeah. really hyped up for them anymore as far as like parfum de marley and ash and i have talked about this on video before it's like they kind of took bond's place in the community as far as you know a big performing niche brand that's crowd pleasing but this time more better performing, better crowd yeah. pleasing, easier discounts. <laughs> Am I? Is that fair? Yeah, um, they they definitely right now, as far as big niche brands go, probably are the first ones that come to mind. As far as that, just going for maximum versatility, wearability, mass appeal, while giving you something mm -hmm. that does have better ingredient quality than your typical designer, so it's going to have that more luxurious feel. And that, that really appeals to a lot of people because you're getting something higher quality, but at the same time, it's something that you can wear in all kinds of different situations instead of being like that type of niche fragrance where you smell it and you go, yeah, it smells awesome, it's very unique, but when am I going to wear it? So for a lot of people, especially ones that have gotten into the fragrance community or into fragrances in general in the past two, three, four years, something like a Parfums de Marley is like a godsend for a lot of people. And um, they and Creed almost kind of on top of that pedestal right now. 
as far as the niche mm. fragrances yeah, go. Yeah, I was just about to say that when it comes to like um, kind of like an invitation, like a, a first niche brand experience, like uh, kind of like the the okay, pop cherry. <laughs> like I know you hate that name. <laughs> yeah. The pop, the pop the cherry um, niche brand, Cree Perfume Somali, they really are at like the top. And there were there are ones that I would recommend as a reviewer myself if someone were to ask me what niche brands I should try out first. Those two, I would say, will be my go-to answers for those people. Yeah, yeah. They're just easily accessible. Um, somebody who's only ever worn Aqua de Jo in their entire life, you can pull out. 90% of the PDM or Creed library and have them smell it and they won't be like, oh my god, I have no Yo, clue what's going on here. They'll be like, well, that's yeah, you'll enjoy it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you'll enjoy them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's um, a sect of people within the fragrance community who quote unquote want to be blown away by something adventurous mm -hmm. when they smell niche fragrances. But I would say for the overwhelming majority, like we've already mentioned, uh, they just want something that's essentially high quality uh, mm. in comparison to what they're already used to, which is already high quality to, to a certain extent. But uh, when you see Creed's, when you see Paul de Marly in comparison to what they're already wearing, um, they just want to be inundated with that yeah. stuff. So to mm. see Paul de Marly do something like uh, this again, I guess, is really cool. Um, whether it's a clone or not, to my knowledge, uh, Greenlee is not. I think you have a sample. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a decant of it. Mm -hmm. Um what do you think? So I've only given it one proper wearing. Uh, I will say that in the dry down of the fragrance, it does remind me of uh, Percival. So of another Parfums mm. to Marley release. And I think that when you mm. smell greenly, um, you're, you're going to know right away like, oh yeah, this is a Parfums to Marley fragrance. So like it has that, that same sort of like PDM sparkle off your skin, the same thing. It's almost like Guerlain <laughs> you know, for Guerlain, but it's like mm -hmm. Parfums de Marly. They have this sort of, this yeah, the, yeah, this sort of vibe where when you smell it, you're just yeah. like, oh, it's a, it's a Parfums de Marly. Like uh, a lot of the fragrances Yeah, you that. can tell that the aroma chemicals are consistent amongst Parfums de Marly. Yeah, yeah, and so it has that, it has that. Uh, it is fresh, it's, it's appealing. It's, it's a nice smelling fragrance. Do I think that it necessarily is going to be one that's viewed as like um, um, latent or something, like one of their absolute tops? Not really. I think it's going to be kind of in between Sedley and Percival, right? uh, kind of in, in that range as far as overall. Um, Anyone want to start a petition to to change Setley's name to Bluely just to um, keep <laughs> Bluely the trend. and Greenly? <laughs> They'll come up with like Redly. Yeah, and, Redly. Uh, yeah. No, no, Redlon. <laughs> Redly. Redlon. <laughs> Redlon. Yeah, change Galon. <laughs> yeah, actually, if anything, I think part of what Puffin and Marley has going forward for them, like, do they want to be known as that? accessible Orientals brand of just night out favorites. And to be fair, if they're doing that, that's a great space to fill and they've been doing it beautifully. Mm -hmm. However, um, them with these summer releases, like I'm starting to be like, okay, we're kind of excited for them because it has a Puff and the Marley yeah. name, but a part of us is coming into those releases thinking that there's no way this is gonna touch Herod. There's no way this is gonna touch Leighton. Stuff that mm -hmm. is, you know, again, more geared I, towards I think that out. is uh, niche fragrances um, but, in general. Because with, with no, these fragrances, true. like, usually it's easier to make something rich and have a lot of depth if it's going to be one of those fall and wintertime fragrances or night out fragrances where you can really load it down with some, some rich uh, accords and ingredients. And when it comes to summer fragrances, a lot of times you're hit with citrus. And so it's like, well, how do I take mm -hmm. citrus yeah. and make it niche? And that's pretty difficult yeah. to do. I mean, There's there no are only a few fragrances mm -hmm. that have pulled that off. Yeah, there's not a lot of ways to make citrus aquatic fragrances or, you know, effervescent fragrances unique given that, you know, there's only a few combinations of things you can do yeah, with those. Yeah, it's rough. It's so, tough. While that's true, I'm just saying that there are brands that are well-rounded at doing these summer mm -hmm. fragrances. Creeds. And there's yet to be, it, without a doubt. And there's yeah. no, like, cult following behind any summary Puff and the Marley offerings. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, what I'm for sure. And I would say with Creed also, their summer fragrances, the ones that they're most well-known for probably, 
um, do have a bit of an old school edge to them. Um, so they're trying to come across a little more sophisticated, like fragrances that, yeah, you can wear outside to the beach, but if you wanted to, you could also wear it to a business meeting and it's going to work. You know, like Millicium Imperial. Millicium Imperial, yeah. Erofa came yep. to mind, yep. those. So, even at the end of the day, because the, at the end of the day, the Creed uh, man, mm. per se, or the Creed consumer, is the type to wear that as a daily and then refill it every six to seven, yep. 12 months, yeah. you know? That's mm -hmm. who they want perpetually buying their stuff. At the end of the day, they don't have to do something for the fragrance community, uh, like throwing us a bone of something that's going to last forever and is somewhat adventurous. They know their lane and they know people keep yep. buying them, so why fix True. what's not broken? Uh, and in this mm -hmm. case with Parfum de Marly, it's like why fix not, what's yep. not broken either as far as perpetually making new stuff. And I'm going to say this, and I've yet to smell Greenlee. I'm actually really glad that they released it because uh, I do like seeing variety in catalogs, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so why not? And, I mean, they're, they're filling in what they perceive as maybe holes in their lineup. So with this one, I imagine they're trying to go a fragrance that you could wear springtime, summertime, you know, early part of fall as well another good alternative to some of the other releases that they have because they really do have fall and wintertime and nighttime fragrances pretty locked down. Like, they can still do releases there, but it's not like they have gaping holes anywhere. Like, oh, we don't have a wintertime fragrance. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've got lots. So, Because whether they got Galloway for spring and that's, that's it. That's about it. Yeah, at least that comes to mind Initially, immediately. Initially, that was the first one, yeah. Galloway, mm -hmm. spring and summer. Galloway, yeah. Yeah, because most of their releases That's were on the what, darker white? side of things. Yeah, white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. So, yeah. I, I, I think you like that stuff a lot, right? Yeah, Gallo? it's good. Mm -hmm. Ash? Yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah, so uh, I get it. I get the release. Um, it makes sense. And uh, the name stuff makes sense as well. Essentially, just don't, don't get on Bond's bad side. But a lot of people already know no, that, don't they? Just don't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, do yeah. they ever. <laughs> now, do you think Perfumes of Molly is going to, like, um, going to suffer the same way kind of bonded with the with more releases that comes out that people don't care about? Uh, they don't put like, them uh, out as often, though. Yeah, they don't put up. It seems like more recently that they started putting out more and more and more. Because I remember when it initially was a big thing in the community, they only had a select few that were really mm -hmm. popular. And I think... Ever since Layton, ever since Layton, they started releasing more and uh -huh. more, like maybe two a year or something like that. That became and, an um, ace for them, mm -hmm. for sure. It became an ace, yeah. It became the catalyst yeah. that lets them release Layton more is more like more. par for from me, Smarley's Aventus almost. Like it's the one that everybody much, yeah. everybody owns mm -hmm. if they own PDMs. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking on a tangent because I was comparing Creed's and Perfumes to Mali, and I was just thinking like Creed has a lot of longevity mm -hmm. simply because they just have the best fragrance right now, Aventus, and they have a lot of uh, just staple fragrances that people will always use, and they don't release that often, and people are like really, really waiting for a new Creed release all the mm -hmm. time. With Perfumes de Mali, it feels like, I feel like if they don't release enough, their brand, some fragrances can eventually drop off, because I don't think they have a kind of a name like Creed. If they release too much, they might also dilute their brand as well. That's just tangent thoughts sir. <laughs> well actually you know what as far as Parfum de Marly's like influence within the fragrance community itself and I lamented that Creed doesn't really have to tailor their stuff to the most rabid community period maybe I'm wrong to a certain extent because Parfum de Marly actually came out with a flanker which Timmy and I love in late and exclusive of course mm -hmm. and that was 2017 and it's not like Creed was doing flankers but then eventually they did Aventus Cologne the next year and it's just like, you know, just seeing niche flankers was already taboo with maybe if you want to throw Tom Ford into that sphere. But for like a uh, perfume only brand to do this uh, is kind of, you know, perceived as like, whoa, y'all are actually doing this. And now it's like, if we see it, it's like, oh, we're kind of whatever about yeah. it. So uh, yeah. we'll see. I mean, I, I think they're their reputation speaks for itself as far as they're the merging of niche world designer world dude they're merging <laughs> they're taking absolutely yeah. each other now. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be flankers after flankers now <laughs> yeah Boom. because let's be real when it comes to designer to niche uh who 
merge that word world that was tom ford but i think when it merges niche to designer i think it's puff and marley mm. mm-hmm. yeah. if that makes any yeah. sense yeah i can see it yeah. we'll see more of it as time goes too i feel like mm-hmm. yep we'll see time will mm-hmm. tell. well that i believe is where we're going to wrap up the discussion today so kind of a, a quick talk on what happened with the PDM and then branching out into a little bit on niche fragrances in general. Um, you guys have anything else to say before we wrap this up? Any other ideas? I just hey, want to uh, uh, ask the leave. audience yeah. as well, like what do you guys think of the name changes? <laughs> like, <laughs> Tell us which name is your favorite, Greenlee, Epsom, or Sutton? What do you guys think of Bond number nine doing their thing? And what do you guys think of Puff and Marley as a whole? Let us know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just leave all those thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe to Ashton if you have not subscribed to Ashton. <laughs> <laughs> Click that like button. What else? Oh, yeah. Oh, hit yeah, the yeah. notification yeah. bell yeah, for smash us. Smash the bell yeah, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> smash the bell. <laughs> yeah, smash the bell. Three times, <laughs> not two times. That Feel free to subscribe to uh, yeah. Timmy Links and in myself the description. as well. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna do it. Hey, leave us some topics as well if you guys find any topics interesting for us to discuss. You know, we'll we'll take some we'll take some suggestions. And yeah, that's it, All guys. Right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. See you later. Yep.